Thank you very much. Um, good evening or good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm glad to be here. And uh, I think uh, my job is a whole lot easier because uh, both uh, Bruce's have uh, uh, <clears throat> eloquently uh, discussed uh, the meat of this uh, issue. Um, everything that can go wrong with this judgment went wrong and transparently too. And that is why, like somebody asked, why, as it, why is it that uh, people are uh, up in arms? It's because it's very obvious. It is very obvious that Hope Uzodima, who was awarded the uh, election, it was obvious he never campaigned during the election. Everybody knew that. It was reported widely that this guy was depending on buying over the electoral officials. He was not campaigning at all. Now, it was also obvious that it has been described here very eloquently that uh, the mat that they depended on uh, is only a mathematics that uh, could have uh, uh, survived under tanko mathematics because there is no other way. I studied mathematics, I'm a scientist, and I will say I'm very good at math. Even in math in base three, wouldn't have given you the kind of results that we saw. So Imo State, if, if, you're, if you guys know Imo State, Imo State is uh, you know, probably uh, the most educated state in Nigeria. And simple math is well understood. Somebody mentioned here my involvement in the DECO. Yes. When the June 12th election was annulled, I was very close to MK Abiola. I know how long it took us to get enough emotions for people to come out in the street. It took months. Biorubas didn't want to come out because they felt, you know, uh, Biola is not uh, somebody who had worked with us. Uh, he was more uh, in tune with the North. He opposed, uh, you know, the Southwest. So they didn't want to come out on the street for him, but eventually they did. But compare that to what is happening now in Nemo State. It didn't take quite two or three days. The whole thing erupted, both in Nemo State and also international. I represent both uh, the Nigerian American Leadership Council and also the Imo State Diaspora Coalition for uh, Justice and Democracy. We have a, a, a press release here. If anybody is from the press, we would like to have a copy of it. Now, the whole thing for people in my state is that, and I'm not taking from a legal point of view, I'm taking just from the layman's point of view, Emeki uh, Hedeoha, first of all, was the people's choice for the election. That's the person they wanted to vote for. That's the person they voted for. And he got the highest number of votes. He campaigned very, very vigorously. There was no question about that. So it wasn't uh, not it was expected when the results, even in fact, at the night when the, the day the result was announced, People wanted to go and invade the INEC office because they were taking time to announce him the winner. But eventually, when he was announced the winner, the entire state erupted in joy. It was, it was, it was something that we haven't seen in Nemo State in a long time. And look at the trajectory. He came in immediately. He started walking. Nemo State was buzzing. He started paying you know, full salaries to workers who have been paid 70% of the salary for over eight years now. Pensioners were being owed months and months. So he came in. Eventually, he started paying pensioners again. 
road network was terrible. He started repairing roads very vigorously. Things were moving, people were seeing reforms happening in Imo State, something they haven't seen for over eight years. So it's under this particular condition that you know a man who worked hard, we got the expected result, against a man who never campaigned. Everybody knew him as quote unquote 419er. That's somebody uh, like you know uh, Bruce uh, mentioned earlier, who has been associated with fraud. In fact, he has still has a case with EFCC. That is why there are speculation that the president of Nigeria may not be aware of uh, this. Uh, what happened here? Because this man is somebody who is under the watch, full eye, of uh, EFCC. Whether or not this matter gets eventually uh, reversed or not. I believe that what we're doing here today is very, very crucial. The international community is sending a signal that this is not acceptable. And I agree that something ought to be done. Now, we've talked about you know, the legal implications of this. I was with somebody over uh, the Chamber of Commerce, U.S. Chamber of Commerce, a couple of days ago. And we had this discussion. And one of the issues that came on was, he was saying, ordinarily doing business with Nigeria is a very difficult situation. Investors don't is go to Nigeria very easily. It is under this very strenuous condition that you now, based on the ruling of uh, the uh, Supreme Court, that there is no other, we cannot now accept statutory organizations uh, that do validate you know, you know, documents. Because INEC was not allowed to validate the documents uh, that uh, uh, Uzadema presented. Actually, they put the burden of proof on the respondents. And they gave the benefit of the doubt to who, who produced the forged results. It is something that is, when you look at it from end to end, it doesn't make sense at all. But that's where we are today. This afternoon, uh, the House State Governor, Inhedia, filed officially uh, the, uh, for the uh, review of this case. So hopefully in the next few days we will be uh, watching to see whether or not uh, what uh, the reaction or response of uh, the Supreme Court will be. But I think what we're doing today is very, very important uh, because it puts the spotlight on uh, Nigeria, puts the pressure on for them to do the right thing. And in the situation where they don't do the right thing, I think a few things have been mentioned here today. Either the, the legal uh, community can look at this and look at the, uh, the motivation behind what uh, the uh, justices did, and maybe they might need to be sanctioned uh, uh, individually in their professions. Uh, there's also this issue of whether or not uh, the review will be, will be done, and if it is going to be held, then we will suggest that uh, there be international observers who will monitor this particular event because the Nigerian people have lost confidence in this government and its ability to police itself. So for there to be uh, an accepted uh, process, an outcome, I think we need uh, an outside party uh, who can uh, you know, bring some level of confidence to this particular issue. And uh, in my own uh, uh, closing, I will also suggest that the U.S. begin also to look at the possibility of you know, putting additional travel bans on these justices if they in any way uh, refuse uh, to, to, do the right, uh, you know, to do the right thing because uh, they have uh, definitely hurt uh, the people uh, greatly. So once again, I want to uh, thank uh, the uh, U.S. Uh, Nigerian Council for this uh, meeting 
and uh, I look forward uh, to, uh, uh, as a representative of the Imo, uh, uh, Imo community here, uh, I look forward to working with you people on this issue. Thank you very much.